चार्ज ऑफ इनकम टैक्स सेक्शन फोर नो टैक्स कैन बी लिवाइड और कलेक्टेड इन इंडिया एक्सेप्ट अंडर द ऑथोरिटी ऑफ लॉ सेक्शन फोर ऑफ द इनकम टैक्स एक्ट गिव सच ऑथोरिटी फॉर चार्जिंग ऑफ इनकम टैक्स वेर एनी सेंट्रल एक्ट इन एक्ट दैट इनकम टैक्स शैल बी चार्ज फॉर एनी असेसमेंट ईयर एट एनी रेट और रेट्स इनकम टैक्स एट दैट रेट और दो रेट्स शैल बी चार्ज फॉर दैट ईयर इन अकॉर्डेंस विथ एंड सब्जेक्ट टू द प्रोविजन्स इंक्लूडिंग प्रोविजन्स फॉर द लेवी ऑफ एडिशनल इनकम टैक्स of this act in respect of the total income of the previous year of every person isme section 4 itna hi baat bola hai ki jo rate central government nikalegi usi rate ke upar mein income tax charge hoga the base for levy of tax in any assessment year is normally the income of the previous year however in some cases income tax may be charged in respect of the income of a period other than the previous year basically previous year hota hai itna important nahi hai important wali cheez main samjha dunga although income tax is charged on the income of the previous year in the relevant assessment year but income tax shall be deducted at the source or paid in advance wherever it is so deductible or payable under any provisions of the act ye baat sahi hai ki jo previous year ki income ko assessment year mein taxable income nikal kar ke tax pay karna padta hai lekin ye bhi utna hi zaruri hai ki agar us income jo previous year mein jo income generate hui hai uske upar agar tedious kaatna banta hai या एडवांस टैक्स देना बनता है तो वो भी देना पड़ेगा टोटल इनकम टू अंडरस्टैंड टोटल इनकम वन मस्ट नो द फॉलोइंग डेफिनेशन ऑफ इनकम कंसेप्ट ऑफ इनकम ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम डिडक्शंस परमिसेबल फ्रॉम ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम ये चार चीजें जानना जरूरी है डेफिनेशन ऑफ इनकम सेक्शन टू ट्वेंटी फोर इनकम इंक्लूड्स प्रॉफिट्स एंड गेंस डिविडेंट वॉलेंटरी कंट्रीब्यूशन रिसिव्ड बाय ए ट्रस्ट क्रिएटेड होली और पार्टली फॉर चैरिटेबल और रिलीजियस पर्पसेस और बाय एन इंस्टीट्यूशन स्टैब्लिश्ड होली और पार्टली फॉर सच रिलीजियस पर्पसेस और बाय सर्टेन अदर स्पेसिफाइड एसोसिएशन और इंस्टीट्यूशन द वैल्यू ऑफ एनी परक्यूजाइट और प्रॉफिट इन लियो ऑफ सैलरी टैक्सेबल अंडर क्लाउस टू एंड थ्री ऑफ सेक्शन सेवनटीन ठीक है नंबर फाइव एनी स्पेशल अलाउेंस और बेनिफिट अदर दैन परक्यूजाइट इंक्लूडेड अंडर सब क्लाउस थ्री specifically granted to the assessee to meet expenses wholly necessarily and exclusively for the performance of the duties of an office or employment of profit number 6 any allowance granted to the assessee either to meet the personal expenses at the place where the duties of his office or employment of profit are ordinarily performed by him or at a place where he ordinarily resides or to compensate him for the increased cost of living number 7 the value of any benefit or perquisite whether convertible into money or not obtained from a company either by a director or by a person who has a substantial interest in the company or by a relative of the director or such 
person and any sum paid by any such company in respect of any obligation which but for such payment would have been payable by the director or other person aforesaid. Number 8. The value of any benefit or perquisite, whether convertible into money or not, obtained by any representative SAC mentioned in Clause 3 or Clause 4 of Subsection 1 of Section 160 or by any person on whose behalf or for whose benefit any income is receivable by the representative SAC such person being hereafter in this subclause referred to as the beneficiary and any sum paid by the representative SAC in respect of any obligation which but for such payment would have been payable by the beneficiary. Any sum chargeable to income tax under clauses 2, 3, 3A, 3B, and 3C of section 28 or section 41 or section 59. Number 10. The value of any benefit or perquisite taxable under clause 4 of section 28. Any sum chargeable to income tax under clause 5 of section 28. Any capital gains chargeable under section 45. The profits and gains of any business of insurance carried on by a mutual insurance company or by a cooperative society. Any winnings from lotteries, crossword puzzles, cases including races including horse races, card games and other games of any sort or from gambling or heating of any form or a nature whatsoever. For the purpose of this subclause, lottery shall include winnings from prizes awarded to any person by draw of lots or by chance or in any other manner whatsoever under any scheme or arrangement by whatever name called. Card game and other game of any sort shall include any game show and entertainment program on television or electronic mode in which people compete to win prizes or any other similar game. Any sum received by the SAC from his employees as contributions to any provident fund or superannuation fund or any fund set up under the provisions of the Employees State Insurance Act 1948 or any other fund for the welfare of such employee. Any sum received under a key man insurance policy including the sum allocated by way of bonus on such policy varying from assessment year 1997-98. Any sum referred to in clause 5A of section 28. तो ये जो हम लोग पढ़े हैं इतना इसमें कुछ भी नहीं है इनकम टैक्स के जो अलग-अलग डिविजन्स हैं उसमें जो इनकम हम लोग लेते हैं वही सब के बारे में बताया गया है हम लोग जब फुल किताब पढ़ लेंगे आप लोगों को समझ में आ जाएगा इतना मैं यहां पर आपको बता दूं कि जितने भी सोर्सेस ऑफ इनकम है इनकम टैक्स के अंदर में उनको मेनली चार या पांच हेड में बांट बांटा गया है income from salary, income from house property, income from business and profession, uh, income from capital gains और income from other sources. तो ये जब हम लोग complete कर लेंगे तो हम लोग को समझ में आ जाएगा कि क्या कच्चे से included हो. ठीक है? तो ये सब में यही बाते हैं कुछ इन ज़्यादा important नहीं है. Concept of income देखते हैं. Concept of income. Generally speaking, the word income cover, covers receipts in the shape of money or money's worth, 
which arise with certain regularity or expected regularity from a definite source okay however all receipts do not form the basis of taxation under the act broadly an analogy is drawn of a tree and the fruits of that tree the tree symbolizes the source from which one gets fruits which symbolizes income the receipt arising from the sale of tree itself is therefore considered a capital receipt which is not income but the receipts flowing from this source with fruits is income on application of this analogy it can be said that while the receipt arising from the sale of a house is not income the receipt arising from the realization of rent is income in the same way a receipt from the sale of a machine is not income but from the sale of produce throughout uh produce brought out from the machine is income in these cases however if a person deals in purchase and sale of house properties or machines these assets do not remain a source and the profit derived from activities of purchase and sale becomes income the source need not necessarily be tangible as the return for human excursion is also income to isme kuch bhi nahi hai income ka matlab hai regular inflow of money theek hai na yahan par bataya gaya hai ek source aur jis source se income aati hai ek example yahan par de diya ped ka ped jisme fruits lagta hai fruits to lagta rehta hai lagta hi rehta hai theek hai na to wo ho gaya income और जो पेड़ है वो एक्चुअली कैपिटल है कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट है उसको अगर हम लोग सेल करेंगे उससे जो पैसा आएगा उसको बोलेंगे कैपिटल रिसिप्ट और फ्रूट से जो पैसा आएगा उसको बोला जाएगा रेवेन्यू रिसिप्ट तो इनकम रेवेन्यू रिसिप्ट है रेवेन्यू रिसिप्ट से जो इनफ्लो आता है पैसे का उसको हम लोग इनकम बोलते हैं नंबर वन दी एब इज ए ब्रॉड जनरलाइजेशन while a distinction is generally made between the capital receipt and revenue receipt as illustrated above the act has widened the scope of income by expressly including within the meaning of income the receipts which do not fall under the broad concept explained above for instance the act specifically makes the profit arising from the sale of certain capital assets also subject to tax under certain circumstances as income under the head capital gains the winnings from lotteries crossword puzzles races card games etc which do not arise from any definite source and do not have the element of regularity have also been specifically क्लेरीफाइड टू बी इनकम अंडर दी एक्ट लेकिन इनकम टैक्स के अंदर में कुछ एक इनकम ऐसी है जिसको कि इनकम माना जाता है वो रेगुलर जो डेफिनेशन इनकम का उसको वो उसके अनुरूप नहीं होने के अब बावजूद है जैसे कि लॉटरी लॉटरी तो कोई रेगुलर नहीं कभी लग सकती है नहीं लग सकती है आप लोगे तो लगेगी नहीं तो नहीं लगे नहीं लेंगे तो नहीं लगेगी तो लॉटरी की इनकम को भी माना जाता है रेस हॉर्सेस वगैरह इस टाइप की इनकम को भी इनकम ही माना जाता है ठीक है ना तो यही बात यहाँ पर बोला गया है पॉइंट नंबर टू इट इज नॉट द ग्रॉस रिसिप्ट बट ओनली द नेट रिसिप्ट अराइव एट आफ्टर डिडक्टिंग द रिलेटेड एक्सपेंसिस इनकर्ड इन कनेक्शन विथ अर्निंग सच रिसिप्ट दैट आर मेड द बेसिस ऑफ taxation it is not the gross receipts but only the net receipts arrived at after deducting the related expenses incurred in connection with earning such receipts that are made the basis of taxation 
some important principles which explain the importance of income for income tax purpose are given below number 1 regularity of income income connotes periodical monetary return coming in with some sort of regularity or expected regularity from definite sources the source is not necessarily one which is expected to be continuously productive but it must be one whose object is production of a definite return excluding anything in the nature of a mere windfall however this does not mean that income which does not arise regularly will not be treated as income for tax purposes example winnings from lotteries etc number 2 form of income the income received by the sac need not be in the shape of cash only it may also be some other property or right which has monetary value wherever income is received in kind like perquisites then their value has to be found as per the rules prescribed and this value shall be taken to be the income number 3 tainted illegal income income is income do tainted for purposes of income tax there is no difference between legal and tainted tainted ka matlab illegal ho gaya even illegal income is taxed just like any legal income ye thoda important hai ki income tax legal or illegal income ke upar mein distinction nahi rakhta income earn hui hai to uske upar tax dena padega even if wo illegal income hai लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि इनकम टैक्स इलीगल इनकम अर्न करने के लिए उत्साहित करता है ये नहीं है लेकिन इनकम टैक्स एक्ट के अंदर में लीगल और इलीगल इनकम को लेकर कोई डिस्टिंगशन नहीं है नंबर फोर एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इनकम वर्सेस डाइवर्शन ये भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है वेर एन एस एस सी अप्लाइज एन इनकम टू डिस्चार्ज एन ऑब्लीगेशन आफ्टर द इनकम रिचेज द हैंड्स ऑफ द एस एस सी it would be an application of income and this would result in taxation of such income in the hands of the ssc however where there is a diversion of income before it reaches the hands of the ssc it cannot be treated as an income of the ssc agar diversion hai to usko income nahi mana jayega agar application hai to mana jayega isse hum log kya samajhte hain ki maan lijiye ki company ne बी को पैसा दिया ये बोल करके कि ये पैसा को आप ए को दे दीजिए तो बी पैसा ले करके क्या करेगा ए को दे देगा तो बी को कंपनी पैसा दे रही है पैसा बी के पास आ रहा है लेकिन वो बी के लिए इनकम नहीं है बिकॉज इट इज़ डाइवर्शन ऑफ इनकम वो पैसा आया और फिर वो पैसा को डाइवर्ट कर दिया इसके ऊपर उसको उसके ऊपर जिसको कि एक्चुअली मिलना चाहिए था इसको बोला जाता है डाइवर्शन ऑफ इनकम नंबर फाइव डिस्प्यूटेड इनकम एनी डिस्प्यूट रिगार्डिंग द टाइटल ऑफ द इनकम कैन नॉट होल्ड अप द असेसमेंट ऑफ द इनकम इन द हैंड्स ऑफ द रेसिपेंट एनी डिस्प्यूट रिगार्डिंग द टाइटल ऑफ द इनकम कैन नॉट होल्ड अप द असेसमेंट ऑफ द इनकम इन द हैंड्स ऑफ द रेसिपेंट द रेसिपेंट इज देयर फॉर चार्जेबल टू टैक्स दो देर मे बी रेवल क्लीम्स टू द सोर्स ऑफ द इनकम तो इसमें ये बोला गया है कि अगर कोई डिस्प्यूट चल रही है कि भाई ये इनकम किसकी होगी कौन चार्जेबल होगा उस इनकम को ले करके इसमें अगर मतभेद है तो ये मतभेद के कारण ये नहीं होगा कि असेसमेंट रुक जाए असेसमेंट नहीं रुकेगा और फर्स्ट हैंड में जिसको वो पैसा मिला है जिसको वो इनकम हुई है उसको ही टैक्स पे करना पड़ेगा कंटिजेंट इनकम कंटिजेंट इनकम इज नॉट इनकम अंटिल द कंटिजेंसी हैज अपन 
it cannot be postulated that income has accrued or has arisen to the SSC. Contingent income का मतलब हो गया वो इनकम तभी बनेगी जब कोई कंटिनजेंसी हो जाए जैसे मान लीजिए कि एक आ, सौदा लगता है कि अगर हेड आएगा तो बी ए को एक सौ रुपया देगा और अगर तेल आएगा तो ए बी को एक सौ रुपया देगा तो ये डिपेंड करता है कॉइन के टॉस के ऊपर में कि हेड आता है कि तेल आता है अगर टॉस ही नहीं होगा तो ना हेड आएगा ना तेल आएगा ना इनकम होगा ठीक है नंबर सेवन बेसिस ऑफ इनकम इनकम कैन बी टैक्सड ऑन ए रिसीव बेसिस और ऑन एक्ल बेसिस इन केस ऑफ इनकम फ्रॉम बिजनेस और इनकम फ्रॉम अदर सोर्सेस द टैक्सेबिलिटी वुड डिपेंड अपॉन द मेथड ऑफ अकाउंटिंग एडॉप्टेड बाय द एस एस सी वायल इन अदर केसेस इट वुड जनरली बी टैक्सड ऑन ए रिसिप्ट और एक्ल बेसिस विच एवर हैपन्स अर्लियर हाई फर ए कंटिनजेंट इनकम डेट इज एन इनकम विच मे और मे नॉट एराइज कै नॉट बी टैक्स अनलेस एंड अनटिल सच कंटिनजेंसी एक्चुअली ऑकर्स एंड द इनकम एराइज टू दी एस एस सी बेसिस ऑफ इनकम मतलब इनकम कैसे चार्ज होगा डिपेंड करेगा कि वो एस एस सी कौन सा मैथड एडोप्ट कर रहा है कैश बेसिस कर रहा है कि एक्ल बेसिस कर रहा है पर्सनल गिफ्ट ये भी इम्पोर्टेंट है गिफ्ट रिसीव्ड बाय अ पर्सन ऑन ओकेजन्स लाइक बर्थडेज मैरिज फेस्टिवल्स एक्सेट्रा इज नॉट द इनकम ऑफ द एसएससी एंड दे एफ कैन नॉट बी टैक्सड इन द हैंड्स ऑफ द रेसिपियन एज हिज इनकम गिफ्ट रिसीव्ड बाय द एस एस सी ए सीनियर आर्टिस्ट फ्रॉम हिज फैंस एसोसिएशन On occasion of hundredth day celebration of the film, cannot be said to be in the nature of income liable to tax. मतलब जो gift दिया जाता है birthdays में, marriage में, ठीक है ना? Festivals में तो उसको taxable नहीं माना जाता. As per new rule three, if the aggregate value of gift received during the previous year by the employee from his employer is rupees 5000 or more the value of such gifts which is in excess of rupees 5000 shall be included in the gross salary of the employee and hence taxable nay niyam ke anusar agar employer employee ko koi gift deta hai aur wo gift ya us gift ka value 5000 rupees se zyada hai to jo excess amount hai usko income man liya jayega employee ki income man liya jayega number 9 composite इनकम इनकम टैक्स इज ए कम्पोजिट टैक्स ऑन ऑल इनकम रिसीव्ड बाय और एराइजिंग टू ए टैक्स पेयर ड्यूरिंग अयर इनकम टैक्स इज ए कम्पोजिट टैक्स ऑन ऑल इनकम रिसीव्ड बाय और एराइजिंग टू ए टैक्स पेयर ड्यूरिंग अयर देर फोर टैक्स विल बी इम्पोज ऑन द एग्रीगेट ऑफ ऑल इनकम्स earned or received by the SAC during the year pin money pin money received by a woman for her dress or private expenditure as also small savings effected by a housewife out of money is given to her by her husband for running the expenses of the kitchen would not be income in the eyes of the law Any property acquired with the aid of such money or savings would form a capital asset belonging to the lady. तो जो wife savings से जो पैसा इकट्ठा करती है या फिर husband जो उसको घर चलाने के लिए पैसा देता है उसको pin money बोलते हैं ठीक है वो taxable नहीं होती लेवन लम सम रिसिप्ट इफ ए रिसिप्ट is an income then whether it is received in lump sum or in installments would not affect its taxability for example if a person receives arrears of salary in a lump sum amount it would still be his income 12 income must come from outside a person cannot earn income from himself in case of mutual activities there where 
Some people contribute to the common fund and are entitled to participate in the fund. And a surplus arises which is distributed to the contributors of the fund. Such surplus cannot be called income. Income bahar se aana chahi, andar mein nahi hona chahi. Thirteen revenue received versus capital received. Section four brings to charge tax on total income. Prime Minister, in order to come within the scope of the charging provision, the receipt in question would normally be a revenue receipt. Capital receipts are normally exempt. However, certain capital receipts have been specifically included in the definition of income. Some of which are Income by way of capital gain, section forty-five. Compensation for modification or termination of services, section seventeen three one. Compensation or other payment due to or received by some specified person, covered under sections twenty-eight to A, B, C, and D. On the other hand, there are certain receipts which are do revenue receipts but do not form part of total income. gross total income as per section 14 all income shall for purposes of income tax and computation of total income be classified in the following heads of income salaries income from house property income from business and profession capital gains income from other sources aggregate of incomes computed Under the above five heads, after applying clubbing provisions and making adjustments of set off and carry forward of losses, is known as gross total income (GTI). Section 80B. Total income. The total income of an SSC is computed by deducting from the gross total income all deductions permissible under Chapter 6A of the Income Tax Act. That is deductions under sections 80 triple C to 80 U. How to compute total income? The steps in which the total income for any assessment year is determined are as follows. What is it? Determine the residential status of the SSC to find out which income is to be included in the computation of his total income. Residential status and the need. For determining the residential status, are discussed in the next chapter. Classify the income under each of the following five heads. Compute the income under each head after allowing the deductions prescribed for each head of income. Income from salaries, salary, bonus, commissions, etc., taxable allowance, value of taxable perquisites. Gross uh, salary, less deductions under section sixteen, net taxable income from salary, income from house property, net annual value of house property, less deductions under section twenty four one, income from house property, profits and gains of business and profession, net profit as per profit and loss account, less ad adjustments required to be made. To the profit as per provisions of Income Tax Act, net profit and gains of business and profession. Capital gains, capital gains as computed, less exemptions under sections fifty four, fifty four B, fifty four D, etc. Income from capital gains, income from other sources, gross income, less deductions, net income from other sources. Gross total income, less deductions available under Chapter Six Sections, eighty triple C to eighty U. Total income. ये सब चीजें जो है ना, जब हम लोग आगे के chapters करेंगे तो हम लोग समझ जाएंगे. जो चीज़ important है मैं वो लूँगा. बाकी हर एक चीज़ को ज़रूरत नहीं. जैसे जैसे chapter करेंगे समझ में आता रहेगा. Rounding off of total income section two eighty eight A. The total income. As computed above shall be rounded off to the 
nearest multiple of 10 rupees and for this purpose any part of a rupee consisting of pi shall be ignored thereafter if such amount is not a multiple of 10 then if the last figure is 5 or more the amount shall be increased to the next higher multiple of 10 and if the last figure of total income is less than 5 the amount shall be reduced to the next lower multiple of 10 for example if the total income is rupees 79.467 it shall be rounded off to rupees 79.470 and if it is rupees 79.464.90 it shall be rounded off to rupees 79.460 how to compute tax liability on total income on the total income tax is calculated according to the rates prescribed under the relevant finance act certain rebates are allowed from the tax payable on account of certain eligible savings covered under section 88 in case of individuals and HUF. Rebate for senior citizens when they satisfy certain conditions under section 88b and the rebate for women who are less than 65 years of age under section 88c. So, yes, of these are applicable nahi hai, theory wise samaj lije. The amount arrived at after allowing the rebate shall be increased by a surcharge if applicable and the amount so arrived at is the tax liability of the person for the year. Rounding off of tax etc. section 288b. 288a tha, 288b hai. Wo tha total income ka, ye hai tax ka. The amount of tax including tax deductible at source or payable in advance interest, penalty, fine or any other sum payable and the amount of refund due under the provisions of the income tax act shall be rounded off to the nearest rupee and for this purpose where such amount contains a part of a rupee consisting of a price then if such amount is 50 paise or more it shall be increased to 1 rupee and if such part is less than 50 paise it shall be ignored. This is the tax of 541.45 here. So 4 is smaller than 5. So 541 is smaller than 5. And if it is 75, then 542 will be done. Okay, friends, so this chapter is complete. If there is any doubt, please write in the comment section. Next chapter we will do, which is very important, is the scope of total income and residential status. So we will start the next chapter. Thank you.